All right, I'm live. Sorry, forgot to put on my little theme music. Oops, I hit the wrong button again. Oh, great to see you, Charles Latora. Uh, great to see you, Meandering Mike, and super great to see you, uh, Hara. Bosma. Um, I also um, still keep thinking about putting your, um, yeah, I just, I wanted to do something a little bit special with um, uh, your hex uh, on uh, the Durval Creek map. Um, yeah, it would just be kind of neat. Anyways, um, I, I will start off with, uh, well, obviously, welcome everyone. And uh, please let me know what you're up to, um, uh, you know, uh, gaming wise as well. It would be super nice to uh, find out what you're up to. There is uh, one neato thing that um, just uh, I was like, well, uh, it's just because, I'll, you know, a few of the people that I follow, not just on YouTube, but uh, let's say on ComSim World that, you know, do posts, uh, for example, like James Whitmer. Um, how many people are actually either have in possession a new World War One themed games or... Um, or are playing World War One themed games, like uh, for example, me and Mike's playing uh, the introductory scenario for Tannenberg. Uh, Dad versus Sons uh, is playing Aces of Valor. I don't know if James Whitmer's playing it yet, but he just got uh, Western Front Ace. That looks pretty nice. Anyway, so I, I do want to mention about the uh, the History Heroes trivia thing today. We're going to do it a bit differently. Uh, due to the fact that uh, when I randomly, like I said, when I randomly pick the cards, um, the clue, it's just like, how can you not know who this person is? I, I just can't even try to pre like play around with the clues. Like sometimes I try to put them out of sequence so that way um, it's not like, oh, or you know what I mean? There's going to be a lead up to the whatever. I don't want to give you like the, the, the big ones, like right off the bat kind of thing, even though it seems it. Lately, you guys have been nailing these pretty darn good. Um, so I thought maybe what I'm going to do is it'll be another one of the true or false ones. And um, I'll give all of them out at once kind of thing. Um, and then maybe if people remind me as, as we get close to the end of the episode or whatever, um, I'll reveal what, you know, the true or false ones are. And you can get bonus points if you want to call it that uh throughout the stream if you just go uh want to give me the specifics if you say okay it's true and want to give something whatever or no that's false and you give me the right date or the right person connected to it if that makes any sense i hope that works maybe um and then um i've yet again i think this should also help me as well i'm trying to go through uh i i've been printing out um the live stream description uh, thing, uh, thing uh, like, you know, the sources and links, <clears throat> excuse me, which you can go right now onto the YouTube thing <clears throat> and go and take a look. So that way um, you can find, that's why I'm trying to like, you know, so that way I could, I'm, trust me, this is never going to happen. I know for a fact. Uh, Charles Latour says, typical for this time of year, I asked him about the weather. Uh, gray overcast in the morning, sun should burn it off by 10 o'clock. Hmm. Well, let's uh, hopefully if you need to do any of your priming stuff and whatnot. Mandarin Mike says, true, false is a problem if people don't repeat the statement. Okay. Uh, you might not know which one they're responding to. Okay. Okay. So let me know how you think it should go. Do you, should I do it one at a time then? Would that be a better way of doing it? I was also in a weird way, Mandarin Mike, if that is the better way to go about it. I was also thinking, geez, the, the only problem is if I – spurt it out all at once uh yet again it's like what happens if somebody comes out way later and feels maybe a bit cheated out or something i that's was the you know, i don't know but then yet again you i don't know we'll see um it's just they're brutal I, I was just like i don't know what to do with these things um so that was that um so i'll put in up i'm just gonna start off okay I'll, I'll start off with the very first true or false and we'll just go with that hold on I've got it in the banners as well. I'll pop it in there. All right. And here's the first one. Hopefully you can see it. I was the last Tsar and Rachmaninoff of the Russian Empire, and I led my people into World War I. Um, is there enough pause between TF? True or false would be okay. Okay, thanks, Meandry Mike. 
Uh, and I'll put it in the comments. Hold on. I forgot to um, stick it in the uh, thingamajig. Yeah, what else was I thinking about about the live stream? I'm trying to, uh, yet again, It's uh, I think it's uh, it's been a really good thing about, uh, well, two um, uh, books that I've been reading. One is that short guide to history there I was mentioning to you guys. Um, oh, on a side note, I keep uh, trying to remind myself about this is um, anybody that is new to watching um, that just does pop on to this live stream goes, oh, I, you know, I've never found this before or whatever, um, and may think there's a lot of familiarity and banter between us and whatever. Uh, yeah, there is, because there's not very many of us, and um, you know we've gotten used to chit-chatting uh, to each other, but please don't ever feel uh, intimidated about making a comment or posting or whatever. I can guarantee you every single person here that uh comments or, or whatever it would be more than welcome to uh uh you know to respond to your comments uh read them and so on and so forth and just be very welcoming this has been uh yeah the people here are just like super nice man so anyways that's uh, i'll leave it at that so oh yeah like i said i want to put in the uh put it in the in the comments yeah i thought maybe also it yet again it was about uh with the history heroes thing of trying to rely less on just spurting out facts and trying to put in um, whatever, and it would, which means it may um, often, you know, it may not be much material to, uh, to give you or whatever, but uh, such is life. So there's your first true or false, and I'll put it in the comment section as well. There we go. There you go. I was the last Tsar and Rachmaninoff of the Russian Empire and led my people into World War One. So that's your first one. And um, let's go on to, like I said, okay, we started that off, but I do want to show uh, um, a few pictures or whatever, and maybe that's going to lead me into a few things of what I wanted to talk about. Uh, one of the things was, um, oddly enough, uh, was a new, and we'll go to that link. Maybe, yeah, we'll go to the link first. And I found this link uh, 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 Harold Bosma, true. Okay. Uh, uh, Charles Latoura says Nikolai. Um, okay. I'm not going to give you the answer yet. I'm going to let everybody do the true or false for a little tiny bit, but, um, oh, darn it too. And I've got to remind myself, you still, I, I still like the idea of giving people a point for just even guessing. So uh, I think I already, I think I already popped you on Harold Bosma. I'll take a look for the the leader um, or the uh, the live stream description to see if you're up there on the on the board. I think I also put people on even if they haven't po uh, posted a, a comment for the thing just by if I you know seen you on and said and you've said hello or something like that. I'm like, well, geez, I you know I want to make feel people feel you know welcomed or whatever. Um, anyways, yeah, I'll, I'll, hold on, I'll go to the first uh, not this picture here. Oh no, it's the uh, thing I can share. Excellent. You know what? We're going to do that. So you're going to see me disappear. And I'm still going to look at the, the um, um, sorry, if a true, false, a point for guessing doesn't work as well. Uh, no, 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 don't worry. You'll get more points for uh, get, uh, true. You'll get a, you'll get a point just for guessing true, false, but I'll get you more point. You'll get, it'll be like scoring a goal in soccer or sorry, winning a game in soccer where you get three points instead of just a draw. For one, how's that sound? Hopefully, I hope. I'm just trying to get people. Um, I just want people to, to interact. If they, if I was only three, but still, you know what I mean. I, I want uh, you know if other people pop on, um, go for it. Um, but um, I'm open to not stopping that as well. It's not like uh, you know or whatever here. Um, we have the uh, this the slideshow. So hold on here. I want to get on. I think I'm allowed to go full on because it's going to be just me to show you the, the stream. And now I'm going to disappear and see if it doesn't get any bigger. Yeah, it does much bigger. So this is that picture um, I was mentioning to you. I'm going to get rid of the banner for a second. There we go. And I'll pop some more on in a minute. So that was this picture from the uh, McLean's Magazine uh, uh, commemorative uh, World War One. 100 year anniversary thing they did for world war one and i think i was mentioning into this uh re several weeks actually or at least two uh because i was like oh darn it i keep forgetting to um 
bring the magazine home so I can scan it and uh, post it to you. And this was about that, uh, just that picture I found, just an absolute grim picture of, uh, I mean, I understand why they did it and whatnot, but Jesus, and even the driver, I don't know about you guys, but even the driver doesn't look too, um, like he just does not look like he's having a good day. And uh, I'm just like, my God, I feel just so sorry for these guys, uh, these people. Okay, I'm going to see what the next slide is. Hopefully I don't jump too far ahead. Ah, so this is the um, the site that, uh, the second site that I just found out about. Uh, I haven't joined that one yet. I just joined the Western Front Association on the left. I think I've mentioned that group before and I've popped their links on and whatnot. They've got some amazing lectures. Anyways, this person, Rob Thompson, who I've mentioned uh, before as well, I was watching one of his lectures uh, recently, the rail um, on the development of the British railroad system in World War One in France and Belgium and whatnot. And um, I was like, oh, boy, I really want to discuss it with you guys. And then I wanted to find out more like uh, more stuff like I've seen. I, I think I've uh, watched or listened to one of his other lectures. Anyways, I, I like his style. Um, he just seems to really know what it, he's talking about. He's certainly not a boring presenter. I mean, let's be honest. There's lots of people out there. Uh, you know, uh, you know, it's like, gosh, you got an amazing amount of subject material, but it's just that I can't handle listening to you. Um, this guy's really good. And he's a logistics nut. So I'm like, oh, my God, this is amazing. Anyways, I find out that he passed away uh, this March. I was like, oh, my God. Absolutely stunned. He's only he was only 58. Um, so um, anyways, and then I found out about this Rob Thompson Memorial Conference, which is coming up in two weeks, which coincidentally is on a Saturday. So and the, the tickets are 44 pounds. And obviously we're not going to go and or I'm not going to go. I don't know about any of you guys are going to go anyway. So I did contact them just to say that, um, you know, uh, just in an odd way that I, you know, we were going to talk about and discuss it, like one of his lectures and so on and so forth, found out about this memorial conference. And I thought maybe kind of, and you can see here, he wanted, he says, profits will go to Rob's preferred charity, the National Deaf Children's Society. So I thought, well, in lieu of not being able to go, maybe we could, you know, I could purchase a ticket on behalf of us kind of thing in a way. And in two weeks time, and it's just a weird way, because it'll be one o'clock in the afternoon, in England, in Birmingham. And, uh, you know, while this uh, live stream is on, we can chit chat. I'm not saying maybe the whole hour or whatever, but uh, I mean, it would so be nice to watch his one of his lectures, but that's a copyright infringe infringements, which sucks. Unless maybe I got permission, but I don't want to feel like I'm being manipulative that, you know what I mean? Like, oh, by the way, we're doing this so I can watch it. No, not getting into that, but at least discuss a little bit. I just thought it would be kind of a nice thing to do. Um, and I love his materials. So that would be a, a neato thing to, I think, to, um, to think about. What else on the slideshow? And we'll go from there. Um, ah, so yeah, we're going to go through some of the books that are on my way. So Meandering Mike had mentioned this to me repeatedly, um, uh, Infantry Attacks. I didn't even know that. Um, I'm like, okay, so that's where the, uh, the title of that game comes from. Uh, the, uh, was it from Avalanche? Avalanche Press or something. Um, anyways, that uh, there it is. So that will be arriving in the post uh, shortly. I don't know when I'll get around to reading it, but um, from uh, what Meandering Mike mentions, he says it's a great read. Um, so that will be nice. to uh, That one I just picked up because it was super cheap. I didn't even know it was a book. Um, uh, yeah, uh, Meandering Mike uh, mentions, yes, it's Avalanche Press. Thank you. So I didn't even know this was a, a book, actually. So um, I don't. It, it was. It, it wasn't very expensive. So I was like, okay, let's pick this up. Like I said, I don't know when I'm going to get around uh, to reading this, but um, uh, it'll. You know, might as well have it around. And oh, well, we're getting. We'll get to it. So this one. Oh my God! I lost my flipping marbles when I found out that there was an actual biography of um, of. Uh, uh, Svetasar Bureyevich. So I was like, oh my God, um, it, please, you got to come home. So it's coming. 
I don't know when, but uh, uh, oh, oh, man, your mic says uh, we, re we read All Quiet on the Western Front in high school. Wow. I had no idea that uh, Sheepers, what a difference in, um, you know what I mean, in education type stuff. That's so cool. Um, and this one here is coming out. That, this is from uh, Pen and Sword. So this is on its way. Uh, it's just because I, I got a good deal on it. And I was like, okay, I might as well snag, snag this uh, while I can. And the same as this one here. I also got a good deal on that one. Horse, horseman in no man's land. British cavalry and trench warfare. So I thought that would be really neat to um, just to find, you know, I, other stuff to find out about. What else some have I got? On? Oh, so this is one of the movies I just finished watching just a still of uh, Rick Dauphin and Brown. I think it was also, uh, it came as a different title. So that's who, what, Philip, Philip, uh, darn it. I can never say his name properly. Uh, Philip John Law or Lon Philip John. Ja, uh, he was in Barbarella and um, um, the Golden Voyage of Sinbad. Um, and here's a, so that was really good. All these things here, the movies or whatever, or the shows I'm going to show you all free. I got this, I'm, I watched this on Tubi, but I'm sure you could watch it through YouTube or whatever. So there's the, um, there's the thing there. And uh, like I said, I put all the links and sources in the uh, description thing. If you want to go and find out, the, take a look at the trailer and all that stuff and, and whatever. Um and then this, oh my gosh, was this ever good, guys? Um, oh, Beander Mike says uh, I watched the trench this week. Wow, I'd really be interested to see what uh, see what you th uh, think about a uh, thought about it, or uh, like about the acting as well. Um, um, it was one of those movies, uh, Beander Mike. Afterwards, not as bad, nowhere near as bad. Okay, nowhere near as bad as something like The Deer Hunter. Uh, that is, uh, for example, that movie is a one-off for me. I watched it once enough. I will never watch that movie again. I don't even want to like talking about that movie because it screwed, screwed my head up for so long afterwards. Uh, this movie, nowhere near that, but it certainly put me on a, like, I was like, geez, I want to watch something a bit. Um, yeah, it, the acting was excellent. I thought um, uh, Daniel Craig was fantastic. Uh, I don't know about you, but that scene with the jam, holy smokes, that was just, wow. I had no idea what was going on with the scene with the jam at the very beginning, like why he was going mental with the jam. And I was like, whoa. Anyways, this is, I um, uh, just watched this last week. It's only 45 minutes. It was one of those things where I'm like, okay, I want to watch something, but I don't want to get suckered in. Uh, it's a BBC. Oh, yeah, this is how I'm yet again watching it all free. So Amazon sent me a thing saying, hey, do you want to try out Prime free for a month? I'm like, of course. And then, you know, I'll cancel it. And then once I got into Prime Video, they're, I'm like, oh, they're like, oh, do you want to try BBC Masterpiece, BBC this, BBC that for a month free? I'm like, of course. Anyways, this one is uh, three, the three last days or something. We'll find, um, last day, it, I've got it in the links or whatever. Uh, actually, the next thing should show you the title. And it's... This was excellent. Um, and it also brought in yet again, we'll go back to it just quickly, about the Rick Tovin and Brown uh, with this guy here, uh, the Brown guy uh, in the in one of the scenes, uh, he did, um, his squadron commander or whatever hates his guts. Uh, William Aaron says, Nicholas II, um, a great to see you, William Aaron's. Um, and yep, uh, guess what? Uh, uh, you, you probably don't know, but yeah, you're absolutely right. It is um, Nicholas II. Uh, the, the clues are so bloody easy, or I think are just so um, you're going to know what the heck they are, that um, it's true or false. So, um, and we haven't really decided, I guess, on how the points are going to be awarded. But because uh, I was like, I wanted to give people one point for just guessing. But uh, so we'll see how that goes. Yeah, your mic says, Charles and William, we are uh, doing... Um, TF, what the heck is that? You'll have to let me know. Um, so in one of these scenes, the squadron commander hates Brown's guts for his attitude towards the war, not chivalrous, uh, chivalrous, uh, not uh, gentlemanly. Uh, the things he wants to do are disgusting. So on and so forth. Oh, thank you, Manry, my true or false. Thank you, Cheaper's jumping. I'm like going off into some crazy thing thinking Charles and William Oh, my God. Uh, you have no idea what I was thinking. I was thinking you were making reference to what you and your wife were watching on 
on a, on some on some channel. I was like, I don't know what the hell he's talking. No idea that you're referencing Charles and William. Oh, Charles the Tory and Will, William Aaron. Oh my God! But anyways, at the and one later on in the scene with uh, of this Rick Tobin and Brown, the squadron commander is uh, disgusted with himself and the fact that uh, yeah, Brown is right. Uh, they've had to change their attitudes and their thinking towards war, and that's uh, this is the way it's changed. Uh, William Aaron is false. Um, uh, let you know later. Um, so and that, why I bring this up is because later on in this, in this episode, like I said, it's only 45 minutes. I found it in, I, I can't wait to watch this again. This actor, whoever played Fosh, holy smokes. Uh, and the biographer talks about the fact, and it never dawned on me guys that, um, it's just the way I've been, you know, uh, finding out about world war one. It's amazing how it's never dawned on my head that, France and Belgium are the ones that were invaded and had to take the brunt of their destruction of their, you know what I mean? Like uh, it just never dawned on me. Um, uh, William Aaron's false. It was Roma, Romanoff. Um, I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to say anything. Um, anyways. And the biography mentions uh, that Foch, uh, it was, was really, really um, uh, iron willed set against like, um, you know, um, what he wanted against Germany and his attitude towards uh, uh, the German military and the, and their command and, and whatnot. And even the guy on the left there, he was the, uh, the school teacher or whatever that um, represented the Germans that had to sign for the Germans. And supposedly from what I've been reading and what they mentioned in the ep episode, he was brought there specifically. So that way, when things went to hell, um, Charles Latour says to me, that question didn't seem sound like a true false question. Interesting. Um, because there's something in, in it, Charles Latora, that may be false. Um, there you go. Um, uh, the uh, so They were saying he would be the fall guy. They could always say that it was the politicians. It wasn't the military that actually signed the armistice. Anyways, uh, Foch, the, the biographer mentions that you've got to remember that Foch saw his son die. Uh, or, you know, in 1914 uh, with the initial uh, uh, the offensives um his only son i think um saw the destruction of you know so much of france they actually supposedly when uh, they picked him up across the uh, uh the neutral zone or whatever um they purposely drove him around devastated areas of france before bringing him into uh the train that and then blindfolded him or whatever or, or covered windows or whatever to the train car uh where he was going to uh, do the negotiations they wanted to make sure that he saw uh, what Germany had done to France kind of thing. I was like, Jesus. Um, Charles Latour says, as a student, I always dislike true false questions. Okay, no, okay, well, we'll, we'll go that way. <laughs> it may not happen. Well, uh, we'll see how, it, uh, we'll just, I'm just going with you guys as well. How's that? But this, um, yet again, like I said, to tie it in with that movie bit, uh, I, it was kind of like, he, uh, the biographer almost mentioned that um, he was disgusted in himself in a sense of how he had changed, that he was no longer. And he uh, blamed the Germans in breaking uh, something that uh, that perhaps could never get um, fixed again or we could never view the world the same way. Um, uh, in an interesting way, I did find uh, what I thought was, uh, I don't know why this didn't occur. Uh, when they were doing the negotiations at the end, he did make it get a little bit. He wanted the uh, naval blockade uh, lifted, uh, and Foch said, no effing way, that's not happening. Uh, Meandering Mike says, the true false are either trick questions or you think they are when they are not. Yes, um, uh, well, that's what I tried to do. Um, I was, I found that what I found interesting is why they did not, uh, or the school teacher didn't uh, offer maybe a partial uh, blockade, maybe um, once a week. I don't know about whatever, like just say, look, uh, Maybe on every, um, I, I'm sorry, I'm going to throw this in, but maybe even like even add a little uh, zip to it and say, uh, how about on every um, uh, on every Saturday or something like that on the, you know, on, on a certain um, religious uh, rest day or what have you, um, the naval blockade could be list, lifted just for the one day to bring in um, goods. It never happened, but I found that really interesting. Just all that 
anyways, it's good. Good show. I watched it free. Um, 45 minutes. Excellent. And there it is. Uh, World War One: The Final Hours. Uh, really, really darn good. Uh, the next one I was going to watch is, yet again, I got this free on Tubi. This is, it. it's called Blizzard of Souls, about a Latvian soldier or something. I was about to watch it. I didn't. Uh, there's a obviously an Americanized version or an Englishized version. Uh, Manny Mike says, I'll have to put the final hours on my watch list. Yeah, it's only 45 minutes. It was wonderful. It was weird to jump so far ahead into the war. Uh, as like in, as in you know they were already talking about like you know Russia was over with and whatnot. William Marion says got to leave. We are at the St. Jacobs uh, Farmers Market. Great to see you, Williams. Uh, William Marion. I hope you have a wonderful day. See you later. Um, and there's the uh, the one I'm getting from Tubi right now, and I'm sure you guys could f find it super ultra like just find it free or whatever. Um, Manor Mike says see you later, Williams. So that was. The reason why I'm watching this, uh, which I'm also getting free through the BBC, whatever's for a, free for a month. I'm, it's an old uh, BBC show from 2014. Uh, PBS was airing it uh, for a while. It's called The Crimson Field. I just started watching a little bit of it last night. Um, oh, my gosh. Of course, it's going to be the typical a bazillion love interests and so on and so forth and whatever. Uh, Charles Latour says, ciao, Mr. Aarons. Do you know what? It is nice to be able to watch uh, something that's a bit more um, lighthearted, if you want to call it that. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, you hear like, you know, the nice little, there's a bazillion humorous moments and, you know, the like, it's like Doc Martin. And it's PBS masterpiece, for Christ's sakes, for, uh, you know, for the average person. It's like watching a uh, uh, horn blower or, you know, that type of stuff. Uh, it's, a lot of stuff. Well, here it is. The Crimson Field. Yeah, it was done way back when. I mean, like I said, I'm finished watching the first episode pretty close. Um, and I mean, look at the people. I mean, not an ugly person there. So, I mean, you know what you're getting. I mean, I'm not worried about that. So let's hopefully I don't risk it. Oh, good. So here is uh, something I did want to talk about. And we'll bring it up. Uh, let me know if, if you find this, um, if it's not looking um, big enough, please let me know. I don't know. So this is, as you know, a picture of my, or maybe you don't know, a picture of my um, wall map that I was using to get, uh, with Ken. Uh, it's just a section of it, the Galitza Tarnif uh, breakthrough after turn one for the, the central powers and those little orange. Uh, uh, Meandering Mike says, so much shadow. Yes, I know. Uh, it was, uh, but that's not the part we're going to have to worry about. I just wanted you guys to actually see the, um, or maybe I should have put, actually, you know what? We're going to go to the next slide. Aha. Let me know. And oh, actually, you know what? We should have, I uh, should have, um, well, that's not too bad, I guess. I don't know. Um, I wish I could. Yeah, that's all right. But okay, here's that black line. So the, you guys can see that black line, I hope. I don't know if you can see my arrow. Um, probably not. That black line there, actually, you know what? Hold on here, guys. Let's go to a proper picture. So that way I can really, I can bump it up for you. I think that's the best way. So that would be the Galicia one. Yes. All right. So I'm going to get, I'm going to kill the, um, um, I'm going to remove that. Okay. We're back to here. Um, uh, Manry Mike says black line and red line. Yes. Okay. So now I'm going to show you. Uh, I can. Uh, I'll show you a proper image, not from the slideshow, and we'll go from there. The reason why I wanted to bring this up, or, or whatever, it just blows me away of how. Um, and I, it's, I'm still not. Obviously, it's going to probably, um, probably never uh, clue into how much of an uh, perspective this is of how many people are involved. I look at the numbers and it, I watch. Uh, you know, the Great War Channel week to week, and he'll be mentioning, you know, 500,000 people, like a half a million people were casualties or just on this one side in one month in that area. And, you know, you try to convert that into uh, strength points in Devout Creek terms to see it for another. It's weird, eh, to think that I've got to convert it into those abstract things because it, the reality is I don't understand what 
a, a counter with four whatevers. It's a, it, it's a compartmentalized. It's like, you know, one quarter versus 25 pennies. It's easier to see than 500,000 people. Okay, hold on here. Let me um, show you the present the picture. Aha, that way. Um, I want to see what you guys see. Good. And that way now I can uh, bump it up. That's a, which is precisely what I want to do. Oops. Um, so you're there. Okay, goody. Okay, now look, hold on. I went to the grab to the wrong spot. So I just want to make sure that you can. So that black line here, yeah, I'll, I'll bump it up a little bit more. So that was originally where the, the, the front is. Uh, at the beginning of the Gorlitza Tarnov breakthrough in May. And two weeks ago already, I, I can't remember right now, guys. It was two weeks ago when I wrote the, uh, plopped this down, but it was obviously something important. I think there was some huge amount of a, a back and forth going on. And there was this tiny little uh, town I had that I was trying to figure out where the heck it was. Anyways, to about two weeks ago, that's where the um, Austrians and the Germans uh, retook Lemberg. So this front, at least, has been pushed all the way to at least, you know, to this spot here. All the way. I mean, my God, that is massive. And they were over here, and it's already been pushed already back to here. So you can start, at least for my brain, I'm starting to clue into um, – how much of an impact? Yeah, okay. Here's the the dates quickly. Um, I've got it written down here. Oh gosh! And yet on a side, another side note, I wanted to talk about. Um, uh, yeah. So back on August twenty seventh, it said. Um, oh, that's the that's that little area. So back that here on August twenty seventh, that area here, that place is called Haliz. And on June 27th, Mackinson, Mackinson has retaken that spot. So all that area since August has been, um, late August, has been under control of the Russians. And like within next to no time at all, kaboink, it's gone. Uh, what else did I want to, well, there's four trillion things. And I have to remind myself that uh, yet again, here, I'll get rid of this now. Um, uh, and there's the other thing I have to remind myself about these live streams. And I hope, and I hope for you guys as well, um, if you guys want to uh, sidetrack me or whatever and talk about whatever, please do so. I mean, this is what we're here for. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I also have to remind myself, there's a bazillion things I'm never going to, I don't think I've ever completed talking about what I would like to talk about with you guys in, you know, in any of the episodes. So but uh, there is, a, I did want to go yet again, oh, I'm using my list, so hopefully that'll help, um, is, uh, oh, darn it, I will, let's get, I want to do, do some chit-chatting, hopefully uh, Manry Mike can help uh, out about, oh, let me grab the Sterling rules, because it's about my game there, and uh, Manry Mike, you mentioned something about the retreating uh, 4th Rifles Brigade having to make a column attack because they were surrounded or whatever, or had lost their line of communication, or had to go through the enemy zone of control uh, through that retreat. Um, am I being a rules stickler here? Or uh, now remember, they're just one unit, so they're not an, they're not a stack. So I'm not sure if this is what you were uh, talking about. Um, retreat. So it says if um, if a stack of units retreat, and this is 14-9, I think this is what you were mentioning. Um, if a stack of units, uh, hold on. If a stack of units retreat into an enemy controlled hex not occupied by a friendly unit, so that sounds exactly what you're talking about. Meandry Mike, a stack of one unit is a real thing. Oh, is it a stack? Damn it, damn it. Here I am being a dink. Uh, so that, like, I was like, aha, I was thinking it was some kind of weird, uh, uh, thing I did uh, uh, I didn't understand about a stack of units like I was thinking okay maybe there's so many um, uh, troops that uh, they can't possibly be able to retreat uh, like all of them so therefore they have to make a column attack and there was a kind of uh, damn it okay so um, you know what that means probably manner Mike so I don't have to uh, finish reading these rules then 
is that most likely means the one strength point. Um, well, they wouldn't be reduced yet, would they? Because uh, no, they wouldn't. It'd still be two strength points reduced, uh, retreating across, I would assume. But they're going to get obliterated. I can't see how. Um, so they'll would have. Um, what would have happened to them? It's just. Yeah, I would. Yeah, exactly. I was. That's why I was hoping that it would be surrendering. So if anything, it just means the Germans. Well, they'll get. Um, I guess what two extra two extra demoralization points inflicted towards the Russians. So that's not bad. Okay, thanks, Manry Mike. At least now, at least that covered that up. Manry Mike says uh, it could easily survive if they were only next to one enemy stack after the retreat. Okay, I'll take a look. Yeah, I'll go through the the horrible whatevers. Um, uh, and I will say another thing about the amphibious assaults and whatnot, which will lead me into the uh, Ottoman thing, the majigs. And uh, because here, this, this thing, I've been printing off some maps, trying to like incorporate, you know, figure out things. So you can see like, okay, we know that technically uh, the Ottoman Empire, yeah, have control all the way up there. It's amazing eh, to think like, God, the British are everywhere, man. They have that little chunk of in, in Aden or whatever. Um, you know, I, I can remember you were saying, uh, Meandering Mike, a few episodes ago about, oh, it's nice to see the extent or a uh, comment in one of the videos or whatever, uh, to see the extent of um, the Ottoman Empire in one shot, like because of the maps or, that was uh, listed. Um, and from what I was reading and the lecture there on the um, the Hajaz uh, railway, the raid there, uh, um, um, uh, with Aqaba and whatnot with the uh, T. Lawrence, um, they were mentioning that, yeah, okay, you could say that technically this is Ottoman territory, but they didn't really have much control of it. And that's why they had to spend a lot of uh, whatever. So they're getting raided every, it was kind of reminded me of like saying, okay, yeah, you could say I've got, I own a, an acre of uh, on, you know, on Mars or something, but you know, what does that mean? I can win a lawsuit if uh, NASA drives one of their rovers over my acre of, I mean, come on, you know, that type of thing. So it was like, okay, technically the Ottomans, I guess, have all that territory. Because I was thinking when I wanted to look at it, I was like, okay, can I figure out another, could the Ottomans, if you're playing in Krieg or whatever, could you uh, figure out a way of um, cutting off or causing uh, the British issues down uh, at the bottom of the Red Sea before they were even getting anywhere near the Suez Canal. I don't know yet, but I was like, well, probably not because it looks like they have scant of any, any, re anything going on there. So yeah, it's a lot, a lot of things to figure out. Okay. Let's go to the uh, one thing I did want to show you, which is, uh, which uh, also, I think I may have found a, a, a nice example of what you guys often call Chrome and I've mentioned um, that sometimes Chrome can get in the way a, a bit too much. And some of it is a nice, okay, that's a nice add-on or, or I, I, it, I guess brought enough thought into whatever, into whatever. And that's the, one of the, um, here, I got to get to my live stream description thing. Oh, I haven't done very many of the true false things. How do you want me to do this guys? Let me know if you want me to just spurt it out all in one shot. I will. Um, so the, 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 uh, game that I just randomly popped, uh, look, decided to take a look at was this one. Uh, Le Diable au Corps or something. And hold on, I'll, uh, share it. Oops. Wrong one. How did I do that? Ah, oh, okay. Sorry, guys. Time for another true false would be good. Okay, good. Okay, then. I'm going to put you on one. Um, here we go. In August 1914, I mobilized my Russian army in support of Serbia, leading to war with Germany. And I'll pop that in the comments. Uh-huh. And I'll also give you the uh, Wikipedia link to um, every five minutes or so. Okay, thanks. Hold on. 
All right. There we go. In August 1914, I mobilized my Russian army and supported Serbia, leading to war with Germany. So that's the um, the next one. Um, what did I want to show you? Hold on here. Was the the game, and hopefully that it's a. Um, I just I, I popped it on the wrong one. Oh, as well as actually, you know what? We're going to show you. I'm going to show you the Great War group first, very quickly. Um, it's just another uh, another place to uh, to take a look at, and then I can pop it in. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So, all right. Um, present. Share screen. All right, there. So this, yeah, this is uh, the Great War Group. I haven't um, signed up for it yet, but it's another uh, thing to take a look at. But they seem to have a ton of stuff as well as, oh, my gosh, did I ever, um, I missed out. It was last uh, last spring. Um, is this, I think, it's not that, was it the online course? Uh, I won't take it. It'll take me too long to look for it. I'll just pop in the thing which I wanted to show anyways. Nope. It was the BGG thing. Let's go to that. So you can still see that. Good. So it's this this game here. Le, Le Diable. Oh, anyway, so uh, what I did want to say, hold on, I'll go back to the thing, was that the, the uh, hopefully you can say that. Good. Excellent. Um, I'll get rid of the banner for now. Comment. Um, Charles, one every, oh, sorry, uh, one every 15 to 20 minutes is fine with me, but I'm tainted. Okie doke. Uh, Rihanna and Mike, false. In August 1914, I mobilized my Russian army and supported Germany, leading the war. By God, I'm going to have to do some tallying later. Um, and the sad thing is, guys, is that, uh, you know, pop me on for a tiny, tiny bit or whatever. I don't really. There we go. Um, hopefully I'm not going to uh, screw up the whatevers, um, was that they have some online courses. And one of the presenters last spring was uh, Dr. Uh, um, Vanda Wilcox. I'm like, oh, man, are you kidding me? That was the uh, the lecture, uh, the person that was interviewed on uh, Nebula, the uh, real-time history thing there. I said that I've listened to her freaking interview uh, so many flipping times on Italy in, in World War One. It's just incredible. Then you make another trick question. Damn you to hell. Uh, well, I gave, I guess I just said what it is if it's true or false. <laughs> I'm trying, man. I'm trying these little tricky things. I even, um, I'll be honest with you, I even uh, fiddled with, um, uh, well, here. <laughs> I'm going to. Oh, uh, no, I didn't put it in there, so not the comments. Well, I'll put it in the comments because I didn't put it in as a banner, I don't think. But uh, here's here. here's another uh, little tricky thing I tried to do. Um, is that game in French or Italian? I, so here we go. We're going to take a good old look, I hope. So he's, it's in English. Uh, it looks like it was originally Italian. And oh my God, man, the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the irony is, oh my God. So you see the links there? So I'm like, go to link. They're all broken. I'm like, oh my God, you can't get the thing. I wanted to love, love to try to uh, get the, uh, the game for you guys, so on and so forth. All over the place. Couldn't find it. Finally uh track it down i'm so happy and i save it to my uh thing and i'm like gonna send off the bgg and say look you know blah 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 no you know where it is then the freaking file section the bgg all that time <laughs> ah, ah! lord have mercy anyways i wanted to show you um please let me i'm gonna put it up a little bit but please let me know if it's not looking right So there you go. Um, and it's free. It's uh, the guy constantly mentions free, free, free. Um, 
Uh, you know, we have been talking about this quite a bit. You can see the problem here. It's a beautifully presented, except there's no, um, as you can see, there would be an issue if you wanted to print this out. Um, you can see where the middle is. There's a lot of stuff eating up the middle. But um, very, very nice. I mean, for a self-published thing, it looks wonderful. Um, oh, hold on. I want to get to make sure that I get rid of me. And so you just see the full on. They're excellent. Now it's at the very end where um, uh, I thought, oh, this looks like a, well, I'm sure it is a, uh, an example of Chrome. And um, I thought you guys would go, yep, yeah, that's a good, that's a good sign of Chrome. Not too much, not being too fiddly. And it's an optional rule. And I thought, wow, this person knows a bit of something like, obviously did some interesting research or he found an interesting anecdote. Yeah, it's right here, right below the picture. There we go. The optional Bosno Herzegovinian supplies. In spite of their religion, Islamic, the Bosniakian were described as tough men who refused to fight in late 1917 and 1918 without an alcoholic support. Oh, sorry, without an, al al without an alcoholic support. Their motto was Nima Rum, Nima Strum, I guess. No rum, no assault. The Austrian player can choose this rule in order to be closer to history or war memoirs legend. Roll a die six in the command phase for each uh, BH battalion. And with a one, two, the in tendency dis distributes rum to the troop. In this case, the combat value of the Bosno Hertz and the Gavinian uh, Koi are doubled and they can assault. With three to four, there's no effect. And they can wait till next turn to ch check supplies. And with five to six, rum is refused and they do not move. Staying in prayer. Goodness gracious. Hold on. Let me uh, take a look and see if there's anybody. Um, nope. No one's posting. We're good. Okay. So I'll go back to um, showing some of the images. And here's the full credits. If you wanted to see that. There's not too much there, but he's, uh, I've seen, um, I took a look at uh, this person and he's seemed to have been um, with this, I don't know what this is, but, um, oh, well, that's a person's name I've seen uh, before. Um, so you guys may know so, uh, about this. Anyways, that's that. Um, hold on, I'll go to the, oh yeah, I wanted to go back, uh, show some of the images or the, whatever. But anyways, that game, this game's free. 100% free. Pretty nice to me. It's nice to, um, I don't, um, I'm not, I'm not uh, impressive. Nice one, man. Nice one. And look at the contrast. Beautiful. Like between the map and the um, and the counters. Well done. Looks looks really nice. I don't know what you guys think, but I think it looks nice. All right. And then um, there we go. Um, Nicholas III doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> oh, man, that's what Manny Mike mentioned, says. Uh, Manny Mike, uh, yeah, I wonder why. Um, yeah, anyway, Mike, uh, I call infer Inferno Guelphs and Gilbillions. I can't say that. Elfs and jelly beans instead. Um, I've, I've never seen, uh, well, either game before. So that's that. You know what? It's well, we got 10 minutes left. We're not going to obviously do the Callendale thing. Um, I will say, Charles Atora, thank you. So it's uh, what a joy, man, to have this. Wow, well, to be able to chit chat with you guys all the time and, and whatnot. Is uh, is that um, and yet again, uh, like you said, guys. Well, you can find it on BGG, but everything I hopefully am ch uh, saying is on in my links and uh, sources thing there in the, in the live stream description. Oh, so nice to have the uh, a light system above uh, the war table, and now uh, afterwards I'll pop on the um, the overhead uh, camera. That's gonna be really nice to do. Um, let's go over a few things before I, I run out of stuff. Oh, I did want to. Um, I am still on to the Africa stuff. Trust me. Um, but yet again, with I think what I'm doing with this illustrated um, uh, right, uh, reading up on the short guide to uh, um, 
reading about uh, writing about history is trying to find, like I said, I'm like, OK, you know what or try to find your angle or find a little bits about what they're saying. And that yet again is what uh, one thing I'm starting to clue into when I'm reading the uh, the Great War in Africa and trying to share it with you guys the, from Byron Falwell is that um, the Germans seem to have been have a lot of good fallback positions, like you know, in the the Cameroon stuff. Um, uh, they seem to have done. Um, I don't know how they treated. Um, uh, the original people that were there and whatnot uh, and so on and so forth. Um, but they certainly seem to have really wanted to develop quite a bit of infrastructure in, in, in their colonies and whatnot. And I would like, to, and they seem to have constantly be putting up a lot of stiff resistance uh, against the, uh, the, the allied forces. Um, so I would like to find some different sources rather than just always from the, the British. Like, I'd like to see what they, uh, there's got to obviously be tons of stuff. And yet again, that leads into my, um, it, my slant of the way I've been follow, falling in towards, you know, finding out about World War I and, and so on and so forth is almost completely ignoring the fact of what France has been uh, getting into or has been, you know, the impact of what it had on them and so on and so forth. That just hasn't hammered hit home yet. That's because probably I haven't been focusing on the Western Front, uh, which is going to happen, especially it, regardless, uh, because I, it's weird to, to feel, I could feel it um, it's still ways away. But I'm like, the Americans are coming. I know they're coming. It's weird. Oh, my God. On a side note, guys, I, w I got so excited, I forgot to... Um, um, bookmark the uh the site i'll find it again but i found a treasure trove of primary sources uh so it's got to be at some weird archive um uh for canadian milk like it's like oh this letter or this memo asking this person to keep a canadian ba a battalion uh this certain battalion whatever in mesopotamia for this that or the other thing just all this stuff i was like oh damn it anyways i got super excited forgot to um to bookmark the whatever but uh, uh damn it anyways hopefully oh we yeah we still got tons more uh, clues cheapers jumping uh, we will do one another one here uh clue number three and i'll say it out and then pop in the banner so the the next one is and i'll put it in here And the banners as well. In 1916, I appointed my son commander-in-chief of the Russian military. And... Oops. There we go. Oops, I didn't show it. There we go. I'll go to comments. Uh, what else did I? Oh, um, what is there are a few other things I'm probably starting to forget about. So I am. Uh, what I'm saying is I am still on the Africa thing. I'm, I'm just trying to make it. I, I, I don't want it to be um, uh, just very factual or, or you know, I, I want to get into that, uh, get, get away from that type of thing. I did mention the, the Diablo. Or hopefully the Rob Thompson Memorial Conference. We can do something nice about that in a couple of weeks. Oh my gosh, it, there's an excellent chance it's going to happen. Uh, Zoe uh, a couple of days ago mentioned, oh, I wouldn't, I've got Friday off next week. Is there a possibility maybe you could take time off and um, we could go do something? And uh, she offered, you know, maybe you want to go to the used uh, bookstore at the museum, uh, World War I Museum. And I would certainly like to. So that's an excellent possibility. Maybe going. They they have that um, the war gaming uh, exhibit on right now that Mandarin Mike had mentioned um, that uh, someone had mentioned in one of their uh, in some uh, in one of the, I guess a, a live stream forum or whatever. Mandarin Mike false son appointed uh, CNC 1916. Okie doke. Well, let's keep on going because we're running out of time. Uh, I'll give you another minute. No, we still got just a few more left. So. Uh, yeah, I'm tallying tally this up, uh, guys. Um, don't worry. You're going to get your points. Um, I didn't mention the, uh, the thing. We've got that. Um, yeah, the amphibious assaults. Um, 
with the Develt Krieg thing, holy moly. And I will say this. I was looking up. I went to the old Consim forum and, you know, type in search and just pop in you, you, and find out who's mentioning. There's a few heavy hitters, if you want to call it that, like uh, Jackson Chomper, Chomper or something. I can't remember his last name properly. I think he's actually did some of the game development play testing. There's another Lloyd something or other. Lloyd, I can't remember his name as well, darn it. Anyways, there's a lot, there's a, some of the heavy hitters that know a lot about Der Velkrieg properly, is what I'm saying. And uh, even a few of them are like, yeah, I would like to talk about, uh, or one of them mentioned, um, uh, I'm not saying them, any of those guys specifically, but one of them mentioned, yeah, I'm having a difficulty um, understanding um, part of the rules for amphibious assaults and so on and so forth. And I would like to talk to Dave about it that type of thing so i found that interesting uh because i'm telling you right now i cannot understand where this amphibious lift capacity number is coming from i don't know how it's calculated um i don't know how it's replenished does it get replenished i know it says something about it can be altered through reinforcements use and whatnot so i don't it's still a ways away i don't have, obviously have to worry about an amphibious assault for ages but I would like to to wrap my head around some of it, for goodness sakes. Um, oh, my gosh. Eh? And there's just all these other things I know that are coming around the corner because we're in my game world and whatnot. Uh, we're entering 1915. Um, oh, yeah. On a side note, I will say this. I did find also uh, a wonderful link, um, I, or maybe it's just a, a YouTube link, on a big long special on um, German West Africa or whatever, I guess right near South Africa and whatnot, that whole campaign, um, which is the next chapter after all but more, it shifts over to that. So that would be kind of neat to, uh, uh, to watch. Um, hold on. I'll get you some more. Uh, okay. I'll get rid of that banner. And then I'm going to put on this one. And it says, the Russian public blamed me for, for our losses and par poverty resulting from World War I. And I'm going to pop that in the comments as well. Uh, yeah, there's only like, I think, three episodes or two episodes left of the Calendale of actual playthrough. And then... Um, it's his review, which will be really, uh, I think, really interesting. That one, I think, is like over an hour, and hopefully we'll just watch it straight up. That'll be, I think, that'd be nice. Um, any other things? Of course, like I said, there's tons of things I'd love to talk to you guys about all the time uh, with this, whatever. Uh, what else did I would like to start doing? Because, like I said, it's I just don't always want it. I mean, it's, yeah, World War One, Der Weltkrieg-ish. Because I'm not, obviously, as you know, in, in my whatever world, not playing um, it properly. Um, but I also want to look at other World War I related games. Like I've mentioned, it's in my description thing. So I, I'm also going to start looking at, on YouTube, uh, Manry Mike says, true, blame for loss of life and economy. Holy, uh, I, I'm going to say this. Um, so you guys know your history, man. Jeepers jumping, or at least I... It's impressive. At least you got to remember, at least from my point of view, I'm not trying to be whatever as well. Like it, it's truly impressive to me. Uh, here, I'll give you another one then. We'll get rid of that one. I'll pop that one on, which is in 1918. The Russian people revolted and I was forced to abdicate. I'll put that in the comments so people can see that. All right. You know what's amazing? I know the way you are in some ways, Mandarin Mike, about being like. It, I'm not saying you're, you're like you're a, you're a gamer and you like to win. You're a you're like you're a good competitive ga gamer. I guarantee you, you're like one of these types of people. Not in a bad way. You would never be that way. I'm, you're not a, that way for sure. But I guarantee you, you'd be like, uh, Chris, you missed a couple of points <laughs> for me or whatever. I just I, I I could just see it. I'd be like. I better make sure I do this tallying properly. Like I can't be a slacker is what I'm saying. You, you're going to keep me on my toes, which is great. 
Um, what else did I want? To, yeah, so I wanted to go and take a look. And just going to what I'm going to do, I mean, of course, obviously, I'm going to miss uh, some, is uh, uh, Manny Mike says, false, revolt and abdication, uh, 1918. Okie doke. Okie doke. Uh, is, um, of course, I'm going to miss some because some people are going to be playing, for example, Manny Mike's playing a game that's, you know, not recently in print, the, the introdu introductory scenario to, to uh, Tannenberg for Devout Creek. Um, but, for example, right, right now, if I type in Western Front Ace, there are people playing it, obviously, like one week ago or, or so on and so forth. Or if you type in Aces of Valor, there are people that have been playing it recently. So what I'd like to do, um, and like I said, I'm not trying to be Mr. Mascot for whatever, but I would like to, because I'm interested in finding out about what other people are playing World War One-ish on YouTube. I would just want to share it with you guys as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if I find some, what I'll do is I'll pop them on next week and say, hey, uh, <clears throat> by the way, you know, on top of... Um, for example, here's one. Oh, darn it. Do I have them here? It'll be in the description. Hold on. Where are you? Dave's Gaming Cave. So let's take a quickie look at Dave's Gaming Cave. And that's what I would like to do. Like I said, I'm not trying to be Mr. Um, wow, you know, uh, I'm just like, hey, man, I, I'm, I'm I want to share what uh, um, what I'm getting off on. That's basically it. So here's Dave's gaming cave. Um, well, if you haven't seen it yet, I'm about to show it to you. So why not, man? I mean, I don't know about you guys, but if I was um, like, and yet again, I'm not saying I'm uh, Mr. Um, oh, wow, I like tons of people watch or whatever. But I mean, if any freaking, um, I'd be like, Cool, man. Uh, someone at least is mentioning me or whatever. So here's Dave's Gaming Cave. As you can see, three days ago, the person was um, uh, doing some videos on uh, Western Front Ace. Well, why the hell not mention it uh, on my freaking live stream uh, to you guys if this is what the freaking live stream is about, for goodness sakes. It just makes sense to me. Um, so why not? That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep trying to do that. Um, that type of stuff. Um, okay, let's pop you on another banner. We're going to stop soonish, I guess, or whatever, because I, like, I know you guys have other stuff to do. Oh, yeah, another side note about last week. I'm sorry about, um, well, I, I guess I clued in. Do not use um, <clears throat> the community tab uh, uh, to send out, um, you know, uh, in a timely manner, uh, news updates or whatever about... Um, Okay, here's a good one. Let's see if I can get you on this one. <laughs> Why do I say that? Because it's probably like I'm just saying, well, that's false. But uh, it, yet again, if you guys can give me the specifics, that would be interesting. So this one. My wife's mystic, Rasputin, said, if Russia goes to war, it will be the end of Russia. I'll put, put that in the um, thing. There's another one. Boy. Someone's, um, okay, thanks for letting me know. My uh, Manny Mike says, I almost never get community tab notifications. And you know what? It, it drives me nuts. There's something going on weird about YouTube, let's be honest. Um, yeah, uh, there's many times I do not get, for example, any notifications about certain people's videos that are posted. Yet I've got it. I take a look at their channel. I'm like, um, I've got them. Basically, if these guys scratch, you know, their right ear, I get notified type of stuff. That's the, what I type of notifications. Or, and I'm sure you you are as well, Manry Mike, with um, your channel. Drives me up the tree when I look up the no notifications and I think, okay, I've answered all the comments or replied to the comments and so on and so forth. Because I, I think that's extremely important. It, it's what I'm into, man. I want to interact. And, um, and then later on, I'll go into the studio section to go do something. And I'm, and it's like, what the hell, you guys didn't tell me about these bazillion other ones. And some of them are like, they've gone on for a few days. That's really irritating. I don't like that at all. Um, so there's that latest, um, uh, one. Hopefully did I put it in the comments? Hold on. Yes, I did. 
Um, and then what else do I have? Did I, oh, here's another one. Here's another um, uh, comment thingamajig. I'll put this one in the banners. Here's the newest one, and I'll put this in the comments. Hmm, can't remember the exact quote. Aha! I'm glad I got you guys. <laughs> oh, brother. Uh, my family and I were killed by the revolutionary Marxist government in 1919. So 50-50 uh, is a direct, direct question. That's true. I never... Oh my God! It was yeah, you're right. It's like I remember the I can remember a, a video a few whatever years ago when I was like uh, it was like one in six chance, and I was thinking, and I said in the video, "What are the odds of that?" I was like, <laughs> "You've got to be joking!" It's just the way the uh, the way our I guess the way our uh, minds work. You know, we just say the most ridiculous things or most obvious things or things you don't need to say because it's self evident or what have you. God, this is going to be stone cold copy and a half, isn't it? False. Um, all right. Let's go and give out the full-ons here. And I, I'm not going to put on... Actually, you know what? Of course I can. I can give you the freaking... Hold on. And then we'll more or less end it on, end it on a good note that way. Hold on. I'm going to... Um, I'll uh, present the freaking picture. Makes sense to me. Oh, oh, hold on. I got to get the picture out first. Um... Where are you? And it was Nicholas the second, uh, not Nicholas the third, which is probably why. Um, aha, there we go. Why, uh, Manry Mike was mentioning that you can't see it on the whatever. Um, so I'm going to present, and then we can go to the real, um, to the real McCoy here. So there you go. So this is the. Um, oh, hold on, I got to shrink her down uh, actually i can keep it there so here's the real true or falses uh nicholas ii 1868 to 1918 i was the last czar uh, in romanov not rachmaninoff of the russian empire i was going to say smirnoff but i thought okay that would be a bit too obvious and i led my people into world war one in july 1914 i mobilized my russian army not august in support of serbia in 1915, I appointed myself commander-in-chief of the Russian military, um, not his son. Uh, the Russian public blamed me for our huge losses in poverty resulting from World War I. Yep, that was true. And 1917, it was in 1918, and uh, um, my family and I were killed by the revolutionary. And Manor and Mike got it completely right. Uh, it was not the Marxists, and it wasn't in 1919. And here's your quote. So you were, you, you were, that's the only thing I did. I just got rid of Romanov and popped in Russia. And I thought that would be a good tricky, uh, a tricky one for you guys. Uh, now we're back to this. Um, Manny Mike, you know what, Manny Mike? I didn't even know he had a son. Uh, uh, I just, I just found out now from you. His son was only 10 when the war started. Um, so there you go. I had no idea. Um, I just thought he had daughters. So uh, I had no clue that, uh, aha, it was a trick quote. There you go. Uh, and yeah, I did. Uh, so thanks, man, and Mike, for uh, uh, letting me know that he had a son. I I just thought he had daughters. Um, uh, what else? Yeah, that's really about it, guys. Um, I'm trying to think about what else I'm going to do for the, oh, I will say this. This is what I'm going to do. Four daughters and one son. Okay, that's it. Thanks, uh, man, and Mike. Um, is, uh so I'm going to be doing a quickie-ish video, not a, a huge one. I'm going to do a video for specifically, but I, I'll pop it on. It's not like it's going to be. It's going to be public, whatever. For my miniatures thing for Hoser House Rules, uh, uh, is doing some comments there in one of his uh, video uh, posts, and uh, uh, talking about activation systems and initiative and so on and so forth for games. And anyways, I was like, oh, I've got some stuff that I've done. We both have a lot of DBA experience. Both are into modifying rules, like there's no tomorrow. And uh, so I thought, hey, I'll just share. I'll give you what I've got, and you can take whatever you want. Maybe it'll, you know, uh, you know, uh, jiggle your uh, creativity, whatever. Um, and then I thought, wait a minute, let's just do a quickie. And I needed. I haven't played in ages. 
I'm just going to make it super simple. It's going to be a few turns. It's just going to show you the initiative, uh, like how the act, like how things move. And that's really about it. Uh, man, you're like, cool. I got six out of seven. Correct. Yeah. Like, like I said, you guys are, um, impressive and what blows me away is you guys are now like when it gets to certain points so you remember um all the stuff I, we're going on I, i'm learning as i'm we're going along here week to week but essentially because you know i know of just bits like a, a, a bits you know bits i i know of like i hear about these things like a big push coming or so on and so forth in 1918 i don't know much about the hindenburg line and um uh whatever and or what or you know even just little you just always get these little bits of information man you're like i took a russian history class yes and you also learn how to roll your r's like there's no flipping a moral um like i said you remind me of the tootsie roll owl um is like just even little tid tidbits when i'm watching things such as um you know dad versus son and aces of valor and he, he mentioning oh now we're going into 1916 and you know, things are going to change. We're not going to have different, uh, um, different, or 1917, we're, you know, so on and so forth. We're going to have different uh, planes available and so on and so forth. The technology changes and just, you know, or on and on and on. And just, like I said, it's just, uh, yet again, which I've, oh gosh, wait, well, I'll bring it up. Um, and I'm sure I'm, I'm sure I'm mentioning uh, like, uh, what do they call it? Preaching to the choir or whatever. I mean, I'm like one, two, three, crunch. Um, yes, perfect. Um, is, uh, of course I can't do it the way you do is, um, you guys know this as well. And I, that's what I wanted to bring up. I'll pop it in later or we'll do it next week. I want to mention again is the junior general site. Oh gosh, it's all free. It's a great way to get into uh, a lot of stuff. I mean, it makes says three. It takes three licks to get to the center of, of a pop. Come on. That's a damn good. I, I'm amazed it's well, anything's available on YouTube. It's amazing. You just type in anything. It's like Lord of mercy. Um, history, man. What a, f uh, I'm sorry, playing games. What a awesome way to learn about history. I don't care. It just is. It's I'm not perhaps maybe the best way of getting you into like even the game upstairs, like uh, it doesn't matter. Let's be honest. It, like getting into simulation, but if it gets you got, gets me talking about whatever, like the game upstairs, the axis and allies, or even like, for example, it just, I know it's not game. It's not a game. The crimson field there, the BBC show, you know, I'm right off the bat, even with my, my knowledge, limited knowledge right now, I'm like, Oh, picking it apart right off the bat, you know, watching the show. I'm like, just shut up and watch the goddamn show and relax. It's just, it's getting in. It's part, it's in World War One. What the hell do you want? Because I'm like, boy, that ship isn't very crowded. That's not the way it sounded. Uh, that's not the way he mentioned it. Whiz bangs and uh, wood, uh, whiz bangs and woodbines, you know, that type of thing. Manor Mike says, I learned most of my history and geography from games. And look what happens. Hey, it just brings you into like, oh, and, uh, even like yet again, where, you know, people are, are mentioning, God, do I ever love it when, um, you know, uh, the designer has designer notes or what was, it's not just like, what were, what were you trying to, the aim or like, okay, I can see why you have the mechanics for that game and so on and so forth, but it leads you into, okay, I can, uh, or where are your sources and so on and so forth. Yeah, you're right. It's, um, yeah, let's be honest. It's, it's just the way to go. Um, that's about it. Let's let, you know, let's end it off uh, here. Uh, thanks again, guys. Um, let, please let me know if uh, you like, I'm not saying it's a new way of going, but um, hopefully a uh, more of a um, not so factual based or whatever. Uh, I don't know. Well, I think it's going okay. But um, okay, that's it. Um, maybe, I, of course, I don't know what card is going to be randomly picked for next week for the History Heroes uh, thingamajah, uh, uh, Bob. Charles Latour says, ciao. Uh, great to see you again, Charles, man. Uh, Bob's are going to see you in a little, little, in a little while in a different way. Um, yeah. And I get to put my overhead camera up there. Oh my God, Charles Latora, you have no idea how much flipping and it's, I put in those beautiful, nice, um, I like them. A lot of people don't like them. Um, the day it's not full on, it's not the daylight. It's the in between. 
Yeah, it was kind of like, uh, what do you call it? The um, the best of both worlds. Zoe, when she was around living in the house with me, um, is one of those people are into more of the orange, the warm color light bulbs, and I'm into the blue spectrum, the daylight. So, But you can get the in-betweens, which is wonderful. Anyways, with these four lights up here, I'm shocked at how much light I'm getting in this uh, in this living room. And um, it's just fantastic. And now I get to put the overhead camera on there. It is just, what a great, uh, like, yeah, like I said, I don't know how long this is going to last. I mean, you know, you never know. A giant meteor could hit the house or whatever, and that's it. But uh, I'm loving this. I get up in the morning, get to see you guys and, every, and other people on YouTube doing their stuff, go and read blogs on war gaming and what, oh, my God, like cheapers jumping. And then off you go and. I go find some history books and back and forth and around dollar store stuff and away we go and share it back and forth. Oh, life's wonderful, eh? Just say no to giant meteors. Yeah. Oh, my God. Okay. Um, that's it. Um, yep. I'm off to go do my uh, stuff. And I think also on a weirdo side note, it's going to be a little while because two things are coming up. And I'm going to see how I can do it. Maybe I'm going to have to pop the um, – oh, here, I'll get rid of the banner. Um, is the um, uh, comment another one? Uh, Manor makes us uh, take care, everyone. Is um, I'm going to do a little video post of uh, my Animal Crossing game. Uh, it's I'm going to be it'll be ten years coming up in a couple of weeks that I've played it, and uh, yeah, that'll be interesting. I just thought maybe uh, you guys want to take a look at that. Okay, that's it. I uh, hope you guys have a fantastic uh, rest of your weekend, and uh, hopefully to see you guys in a week. Or, and I'll see you guys in, in other formats. Thanks. Bye.